Now, Raising Cane's presents the student section on ESPN Honolulu. Brought to you by HCAMP, the Hawaii Concussion Awareness Management Program and Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union. What's up, everybody, and welcome to a brand new season of Student Section on ESPN Honolulu. We are live here at Raising Cane's on South King Street. I'm Cole Malsoff, and I'm joined by my brand new co-host, former Rainbow Wahine basketball player turned color analyst for the team, Callan Spiller. Callan, thank you so much for doing this with me. This is going to be a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Cole. I'm so excited to be here for this first episode of the student section of this year. It's going to be an awesome year. Awesome. Now, we, we will be doing this show once a month at different Raising Canes all over the island with new high school guests and collegiate athletes on the show each time. So we have a fun show in store for you tonight. And if you are an Iolani alum or support the Raiders, you're going to enjoy this one especially as all four guests here today have gone or are still attending Iolani High School. And I think it's only fitting for my co-host, Callan Spiller, to introduce our first guest tonight as they were, as you were, their former teammate. Callan? I'm honored to introduce our two guests tonight. So thankful that they could make it. Two of my favorite teammates I've played with anywhere. Anyone here in the islands knows the name, Wahine Kapu and Lafotu. This sister duo crushed states here in the islands. They're now both Rainbow Wahine on the women's basketball team at the University of Hawaii. We have Lily Wahine Kapu going into her senior year at UH and Jovi Lafotu going into her junior year at UH, making a comeback after sitting out this last season. So welcome, Lily and Jovi. Thank you for joining us here tonight. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Lily, Lily, Jovi, you guys have an off day today, but you mentioned before the show that you guys have started practices. Where is the team at in terms of workouts and practices at this point in the year? Lily, you can start. Um, I think in practice we're competing a lot with each other, trying to make each other better, um, running a lot, getting con like better stamina, conditioning-wise, um, but just building that chemistry before season begins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we're still in eight hours right now, so we're like maybe an hour, two hours of practice, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, but yeah, just keeping up the chemistry and learning how to play with the new freshmen that came in, because they can play, so it's, it's going to be exciting. And like you said, there are some new freshman additions to the squad. There are eight seniors this year, which, as Coach Beeman has said, is a coach's nightmare, but at the same time, you guys are poised for an awesome run this season, so what does it mean to be coming back having a lot of those familiar faces, including the eight seniors and a lot of returners. What is that feeling like this so, fo so far? Um, I'm so excited for this season because this group that's coming back, we have like a lot of experience under our belt, and I think that's very valuable going into this new season, our last chapter in college. So, yeah, I'm just excited to go back into the season with the eight girls and, um, yeah, win. Yeah, it's, it's going to be sad, actually, because... Like, I've been playing with them for so long, and like Lily said, the experience is, it's what you want, and um, yeah, I'm sad it's going to be my last year playing with them. And Jovi, you were injured your, late in your freshman season, um, redshirted last year. How excited are you to step on the court and make an immediate impact on this team this upcoming season? I'm super excited. I've been out for almost a year and a half now, and just rehabbing every day, and practicing and being on like a scout team last year because I redshirted it's I'm excited and looking forward to um, playing yeah and I think everyone's excited to see you back to see both of you back because as your teammate getting to play with both of you through that my final season and both of your first seasons at UH the chemistry that you both share I think is so special and there aren't a lot of sister duos who play at this high of a level. So, you know, getting to reunite for Lily's final college season, what does that mean to the both of you and to your family for this upcoming season? Um, it means a lot. Like, I can't wait to be on the court back with her and family in the stands. But, like, I've seen so much work that she's put in and trying to come back and, like, it's very inspirational to me, like, that she can do that. And especially my other teammate, Jackie, who's also suffered ACL injury, um, it's not easy to come back, so like a lot of props to them, and like can't wait to see the things that they bring to the court. And Callan, I'm going to put you on the spot here. You were once teammates with them back in the 2022-2023 season. I want you to talk about their progression in their games 
as you are the analyst now, from their uh, freshman and sophomore seasons until now, how have you seen their games progressed? I think one of the first things that I remember about both Lily and Jovi were that they were pretty quiet going into team events, both coming in. They had each other. They knew each other. Their sisters, best friends, almost like twins from what I see. So they would spend a lot of time talking to each other, and I think it took a little bit for both of you to open up and take those positions of leadership, especially getting to play with Lily. We have been talking the other day. I miss doing the picks and rolls with Lily because she has such great court vision, and that was apparent even from the start. But as she's continued to progress as the court general, the leader, the point guard, I think your voice has really become more confident. You become more confident in yourself and the teammates, and that's been really special. And same with Jovi. I'm so excited to see your return to the court because even from your freshman year, you made a huge impact in that initial game against HPU. It was a game, and you came out, I think, with 20 points, was our leading scorer as a freshman. Your potential is through the roof, and I've seen how hard you're working, too. So they both made such great strides, and I think to see that confidence grow as collegiate players is something I'm excited to see grow even more this season in both of them. And you, you guys have a strong connection, as we can see um, right now, but you told me before the show it wasn't always like that. Callan, can you explain to our listeners here today and on air how you got the sisters to open up to you and include you as a friend, as a teammate um, on that Rainbow Wahine team in 2022. See, they're both giggling. I think we would have been great teammates anyway, but as most people know, some of our coaches are here in the house today. I can be a little bit of that goofball that will make funny comments. And my goal as a super red shirt senior that year was to kind of become that mother figure, that auntie who took care of people. And I could tell they were both quiet and I kind of wanted to create a joke that would mm -hmm. last and maybe build our bond together. So at some point I thought it would be hilarious if I declared myself the third Lefotu Wahine Kapu sister, which obviously everyone can see the resemblance. The height is really similar. It's really there. So I don't know why they think it's that funny, but trying to kind of become a part of it, making little jokes like that, like, hey, sis, or what mom tell you to do today? Um, in my opinion, I thought it kind of broke the ice between us. And even though I'm going to be that goofball and try and build the trust, I think it really worked. And they're two of my favorite players I've ever played with and two great friends that I'm very thankful to call my former teammates as well. That's an awesome story. And talking about connection and to stay on that topic, I want to talk about the connection you two have with Coach Laura Beeman. She's been uh, at Hawaii now for a number of years now. For a little girl wanting to play at the University of Hawaii, what can they expect and prepare for in being coached by Coach Beeman? Lily, I'll let you go first. I think Coach Beeman, like, she's a really great coach, and, like, she understands, like, from a – human like perspective like you're not just a basketball player you're also a person you know um but she's okay with you making mistakes and understanding that mistakes are okay which is very important in like your learning learning stages and how to get better and stuff it's okay to make mistakes but um yeah coach Beeman is going to make you the best player that she can she can for you and um, she's always going to put her trust in you and she always tells me that she's going to bet on me every single time so mm -hmm. playing for a coach like that it's a big honor Jovi, your perspective on Coach Beeman? Um, she really accepts and I think values the Hawaiian culture, which I really love. And also what Lily said, like she cares about you on and off the court, mm -hmm. especially off the court, um, making sure your mental health is okay. And like if you need a rest day, like especially coming off of an injury, like if you need a rest day, like she's there and willing to listen to you. Mm -hmm. I definitely echo that. I think Coach Beeman is an amazing leader of the program and sees the perspective, like Lily said, from the human level. We're all going to make mistakes. We're humans off the court at the end of the day. And she's still someone I go to, even not as her player. I really feel like she does make me a priority too and helps me if, you know, I'm looking for a different job. She helped me secure my current job that I have over at Baikai. She's an amazing person. And I think as a team, she really does special things to bring the team closer. And mm -hmm. even through the craziness, like my last year when Jovi, several other of our teammates were out, able to bring us back and win that Big West Championship in 2023. Lily Wahine Kapu, Jovi Lefotu, joining us on the student section here live at Raising Canes. Lily, I want to go back before collegiate basketball at Iolani, um, your senior season, and what was your decision like to choose Cal State Fullerton, move away from home? What went into that decision? 
Um, so COVID hit and I didn't get to go on my, all my visits and like I was still in the recruiting process. I was still talking to schools. Um, didn't really get to talk to Hawaii mm -hmm. like that much. I came to a practice probably my junior junior year. Mm -hmm. um, didn't really talk to the coaches yet, but I already ha had gone on a visit to Cal State Fullerton my sophomore year and I sat down with the coach and we built a relationship over a year or two. And um, yeah, I, tr I trusted Coach Jeff, um, like the playing style, everything he hadn't set, he hadn't set for me. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just trying to like branch out and figure out like what it's like to live on my own, be in the mainland. But it was a great experience, but I, overall I just missed home. And like, I'm a big family person. Right. So seeing my brother and my sister grow up was very important in my life. So Jovi, did you have an influence on Lily coming back home and playing for the University of Hawaii, or was that all Lily's decision? Um, as little girls, we did um, like want to play basketball, mm -hmm. college basketball together growing up, so that was a big goal. And um, when she decided to enter the transfer portal, I was like, okay, let, like, I, like, we both value family, and we both really, like, we want to stay home and live in Hawaii after mm -hmm. college, so I think building connection here while we're in college was a big decision. Um, that impacted why we chose to come home. And, um, yeah, family played a big part, but also just us coming together and to play again. Which is so special. And let me say, I played against Lily when she was a freshman, Big West Freshman of the Year as a former Titan. I also transferred here to UH. And even though those transfers happen, I think you grow so much in each of those steps and you end up where you're supposed to be. Um, and it was so fun to have Lily transition from an opponent to my teammate, coming in with Joe V2. They're both two incredible players who represent the islands really well. And, you know, we have a big crowd here. They're excited to see you guys, and you're those hometown girls. Mm -hmm. And last question before we got to take a break. You both talked earlier about the expectations kind of for the team. But individually, for the both of you, have you set out any goals for yourselves um, for this upcoming season, Jovi? Uh, um, yeah, I, I set like personal goals for me. I think one of them would probably be just to making sure I recover properly and like give my body what it needs, especially coming off injury and like not being doing this for like almost a year. Yeah. So I know I'm still figuring it out now. So just coming off and giving my body what it needs. And Lily, for you? Uh, yeah, there are some personal goals. Um, but I think the main goals is for us to to do whatever I can for our team to win, which is like the bigger picture and the main goal. And us UH fans are certainly excited to see both Lily and Jovi on the court this upcoming, se upcoming season. But speaking of goals, at Hawaii USA Federal Credit Union, helping you reach your goals and dreams of financial wellness is their commitment. Learn more and become a member today by visiting any of their conveniently located branches or online at hawaiiusafcu.com. Hawaii USA. Life Matters, insured by NCUA. Look, we got to take a break, but when we come back, we'll introduce a new segment of the show called Sister Superlatives. We'll get into that and more. You're listening to the student section on ESPN Honolulu. You are listening to the student section on ESPN Honolulu. Welcome back to the student section live here at Raising Canes on South King Street. Cole Malsoff. Callan Spiller with you, and we are joined by sisters Jovi Lefotu and Lily Wahine Kapu of Rainbow Wahine Basketball. And to start off this portion of the show, we are going to introduce a special segment called Sister Superlatives. And Callan, please explain to the people how it works. I just thought this was an awesome opportunity to get to know Lily and Jovi as sisters, as friends off the court. We talked a lot about your lives on the court, your experience there. But I think both of you, as I know, as a former teammate and friend, you're both very different in some ways, similar in others. So I wanted to ask a few questions. I'll ask it, direct it to one of you first, and to see who's more blank, just to get an idea of who's more likely to do something. So let me start it off with Lily. Who's more likely to be late to a practice or be running a little close to? That's easy. It's Jovi. 
<laughs> all the time. Like, every single time we try to, like, leave for practice or go to, like, class or whatever, she's always, like, the last one to get ready. And she's, like, telling me, oh, come on, let's go, let's go. And then I'm, I'm by, waiting by the door, and, like, she's still trying to get ready. Every single time is dramatic. It's not no, every single it's, time. It's I, every time. We can ask I, mom and dad. <laughs> we have a little bit of evidence as Jovi had to use the restroom during that break. Came back oh, that was perfect. We counting. <laughs> in, so had to start off with that superlative question. Now I'll ask Jovi. Jovi, who would you say is more talkative of the both of you? Talkative? I would say me. Yeah. Me? Would you agree? Uh, yes, I would say you. It goes both ways, though, but more so me. I feel like I'm more an extroverted introvert, and she's an introverted extrovert. So, so I can talk a lot to like her or like people I'm close yeah. to. Yeah, like too much probably. <laughs> I can I can agree with that. I'd say I'd, if I had to pay, take a pick, I'd say Jovi's like more outwardly yeah. talkative, but then when you get to know Lily, it's there too. And I love the dynamic between both of you too. Just kind of the bouncing back and forth energy is fun. So you both are roommates too. You have your apartment pretty close to campus here. Who is the better cook at home? Yeah, tell them. <laughs> tell them. She is. She's the cooker. She cooks for us. I mean, I cook too, but like she likes to cook, and she's she, also she likes to it. cook sweets and stuff. I like. I'll help meal prep and everything. Let me let me jump in. What's your favorite or best dish that you cook for the both of you? It's like our best. Yes. Oh, for the both of us. Mm hmm. Hmm. Or what you eat the most, maybe. Like, or what do you like, enjoy oh. eating from the other person? Brownies. Brownies? I make good brownies. Okay. Really good brownies. What do you like that I make? Uh, <laughs> um, you made good fried rice this morning. Oh. That. Yeah. That's fantastic. And that takes some time in the morning. I'm impressed mm -hmm. that you're able to make that for breakfast. Okay, another one. Since you're roommates, who's the better driver or who drives you around more? <sighs> we argue about driving yeah. all the time. <laughs> like... We have to make sure we take turns. Like, I drive to school, she's driving us back home. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty equal, but I think I'm a safer driver. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's debatable. No, I think uh, I am. I won't expose you Who's got more but... car crashes? <laughs> not me. Don't lie. That's <laughs> not me, I swear. And both of you, I know, take those turns, and it's good, because you guys are almost a, exactly a year apart. Lily's yep. birthday's end of February, Jovi start of March, so you're really almost five days apart. apart. Five days. Yeah. I'm only like four days apart from them, so I yeah. really am a sister. She is. I'm end of February too. <laughs> <laughs> so another good one. Who is the better singer? Ooh, that is a good one. Be honest with yourself. <sighs> she doesn't sing. What? You don't sing. <laughs> I never hear you sing. It's only me in the car. But I'm not, I'm not a like good singer because you would never know. No, okay. I'm not a good singer. And neither is she. So none of us. <laughs> so neither, but working on it. We're yes. building those vocal cords as we speak. <laughs> who's more decisive? Say you're going to a restaurant. Who's going to be the one to make the call? Um, By this answer, no one? Callan, you can answer this. I think you can answer better answer that one. Have you ever went out with them to, to team dinners when you're on the road? Well, we don't get the call for the team dinners. That would be our lovely director <laughs> of basketball question. operations, Jason. Jason gets to pick. Okay, okay. But I don't know. On the court, they're both really decisive. I feel like they're both two players who will know if they're going to pass to you, will mm -hmm. know if you're rolling not quite open. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. Maybe yeah. it's been a while. But, I, you know, that's a tough one. I think it's tough to be decisive when you're both yeah. together and you both kind of use each other and bounce off each other to make those decisions. So I was curious what you would say, but it sounds like it's pretty even there. Mm -hmm. And then I have to ask, who does your dogs like more? You have two pups back home, Aiku and Seiyu. Who do they gravitate to? Who do they know is going to give them food? <laughs> me, 100%. Aiku, 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 Aiku you. Me. Aiku is like my dog. Seu more me, but Seu likes my little brother a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. He's been at home with them a little more yeah. probably. So that's definitely another good one. And then I'm curious, in the classroom, who's more of the professor's pet? In high school, we'd say a teacher's pet, college professor's pet. Who's the one maybe likes to spend a little more time studying? Oh, I wouldn't say we're teacher's pets, but I wouldn't say that, but... I, we both take like our academics serious so we both like mm -hmm. we were studying before this and probably gonna study after this so i think it's even yeah, yeah it's, a good, it's a good answer we love that 
I think that's a pretty good session of superlatives right there with our sisters. Let's give them a round of applause. Yeah, thank you. And give a round of applause to Callan for thinking of that segment. I think it went really well. And I want to do some kind of superlatives on our next show, too. It might not be sisters like we had the opportunity to do today. But some kind of superlatives, I thought that went really well. We learned a lot about you. We hope you guys um, at Raising Canes like that. Now for the next segment. We have fan questions. So fans from our Instagram oh, wow. on ESPN Honolulu. Follow <laughs> us at ESPN Honolulu. Chimed in some questions for both Jovi and Lily. And you guys might be familiar with some or one of the users who chimed in and gave you guys a question. So this one comes from emiloa.manua. And tell me if you know these people. Was Kona Waina a hard team to beat in states? Jovi, this one's for uh, you. Shoot. And I don't know any backstory. If, so if I'm bringing up uh, some a hot mess, please excuse me, but that's what it was. Was Kona Waina a hard team to beat in states? And be honest. Yes, I think they were there coached well by Bobby and all her coaching staff, and they had good girls on their team, uh, Kaliana, Kayla, Julian. So, yeah, it was, it was a good game. And, um, yeah, that was a good game. I was watching from my hotel room, mm -hmm. and I was just screaming at the TV. <laughs> but it was a really close game, and, yeah, good thing we came out with the win. Yeah, I, I even remember that one. So Coach Beeman, our whole UH yeah. team, Jovi had committed at that point, so we went to support her over at the Blaisdell Center. It was a battle of a game. Jovi was a star. We were so excited to play with her. But, you know, I think every state championship is going to be mm -hmm. a battle because both those teams want it. But it was really cool to see my future teammate, now former teammate, take home the crown on that one. We had another one for Lily, kind of along the same lines of high school. So from Akamai Hunta HPP, who was the hardest defensive player that guarded you in high school? These names are wild. Who was yeah. the hardest defensive player? I feel like it was so long ago. Right. Aww. Or someone who was tough, like maybe when you played from, them. Maybe from Punahou, maybe? Mm. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Mm. Never mind, never mind. Iolani guys, okay. Oh, I don't know. That's hard. Uh, had some... Anybody that was quick was probably, like, pretty hard for me. <laughs> for me. Huh? Me? <laughs> no. who, who was the best player? I'll, I'll add on oh, to this no. question. Is, was there a player who gave the team, not necessarily you guys problems, but maybe the team and the state problems when you guys were, were in high school? I'd say Marital. That was the only team we lost to in yeah. my junior, junior year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. junior year we lost to Marinol oh, sophomore year. Yeah, one of those, yeah. I think that's the only team we, we lost, lost to. Another one for Jovi. And it is, again, from Akamai Hanta HPP. Who is Akamai Hanta? Akamai Hanta. <laughs> <laughs> Did the state or ILH have any other sister basketball players in high school that were good? I think this is oddly specific. Were there any? In ILH? Just in the state. Oh, yes. The Molina sisters. Oh, Sorry, yeah. This is your question. Is that Konawina? Yeah, Konawina. Yeah. The Molina they were, sisters. Me and Lily grew up watching them on TV, and we thought they were amazing, and we still do. They're great basketball mm -hmm. players. Shout out to Molina sisters. Yeah. And we had one question asked to both of you. Um, you might know him from Zion Lafotu. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> had a couple of his friends ask, too, I think. Oh, no. In a one-on-one -on -one versus your brother, oh, who would win? Me. me. I and still beat him every single time. I taught him everything he knows, too. <laughs> Joby, what about you? Me, definitely. So, Zion, you're watching out there. They're both going to beat you. You better take it to them. Get them trained up for this big West season. Yep. And, and I, have, I have one more question before we have to um, get to our second time out. Who's the, and be truthful, who's the best basketball player? It could be mom, dad, brother in the family. Who's the best basketball player in the family? Truthfully. Probably me, I think. Ooh. Lily says yeah. me. Jovi, well, you say? I would say my mom. Mom is a post player. But still, she, like, no, there's nothing wrong. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. We but would play post, we would play one on one with our mom, and like our mom would put us to work. Who's got she like the variety of game though, like in the post, you know, pull up three, you know, handles? No, I'd say mom. See, okay. yeah, she got handles. She like went to call call all that stuff. See, I love the post bias here. We'll take it as a former post myself Don't with two humble. awesome guards. <laughs> <Don't humble. laughs> and see, and there's that confidence coming from both of you. I remember from that first season at UH. 
You're both so quiet, and now it's so fun to see you both out of your shells, on the court and off. You're both going to have an awesome season this year, and we're so, so excited that you're our first guest here on the student section. Thank you, yes, guys. Thank you so much for coming on. Lily Wahine Kapu, Jove Lefosu, give it up, everyone. Before we take a time out, there's something trending in sports, and it's not on social media. It's student athletes suffering from concussions and not reporting it. By not treating concussions, you can suffer long-term health effects. Find out more from HCAMP, the Hawaii Concussion Awareness Management Program. Visit hawaiiconcussion.com. If you're listening to the show, stick around as we have a couple more Iolani star athletes coming up on the other side of the break. We're at Raising Canes on South King Street, and you're listening to the student section on ESPN Honolulu. You are listening to the student section on ESPN Honolulu. Welcome back to the student section live on location here at Raising Canes on South King Street. And I know I promised CJ Villanueva and Keon Prusser coming back from break, and they'll be on shortly. But before they come on, we are lucky to be joined by the person that is kind of the reason we are here today, Senior Marketing Manager for the Panda Restaurant Group, Ali Urbic. Ali, thanks for joining the show. Yeah, thanks so much, you guys, for being here. Awesome. Ali, Raising Canes has integrated themselves into the sports world recently, and, and that's one of the reasons why we're doing the student section here today. Talk to us a little bit more on the Raising Cane's involvement in Hawaii sports and the things you all have coming up. Yeah, you know, it's always been, since the brand started 28 years ago, um, sports has been like at the forefront. We opened up our first location across from the gates at Louisiana State University. Mm -hmm. So it's just always been ingrained and we've, we're, we're a sports-driven company. So when we first came to Hawaii, it just made sense right. to partner with University of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So we're, we've been a sponsor with them now for... Um, let's see, going on seven years. Wow. So it's awesome. We get to be the, the official chicken of University of Hawaii Athletics. Um, awesome. Yeah, awesome. And we just continue to with, with, with uh, sports for high schoolers, um, middle school. We do clinics, free cakey clinics for kids. We did it with um, University of Hawaii women's soccer team. So just lots of different things from, you know, four years old up until, until college and, and through there. And in the collegiate game now, it's kind of turning more professional as as athletes are getting paid for the name image and likeness mm -hmm. is there any people you have on board with nil as far as as athletes or is it just mainly focused and centered around the team uh so that's a good question um that has like turned marketing upside down right but we do have a lot of different people on and a lot of them are, are partnerships that we'll do kind of through social media and they might only be for a season or, you know, even not even a full season, maybe mm -hmm. just a month or so. So we have, we're, we're definitely testing it out with, with lots of different right. collegiate athletes. Right. And do you have it? And especially with this location, even if you're not officially partnered, I know this was a place myself, my teammates would stop after some of those games to celebrate. I lived really close to here. This location right here on University and King is so special. And one of my favorite parts now, I work out in Eva Beach Every single location on the island has that official chicken of the University of Hawaii Athletics, and it's so special to see that support for the university, for the athletes, even beyond in the NIL capacity. And Ali, I have one more question for you, the all-important question before I let you go. This is it. I don't know if I asked you this when you came on the show last season. Is there a secret recipe or a secret ingredient that makes the cane sauce so spectacular, or is that only for you guys to know? You just keep picking at this. Even when I first saw I, you today, you asked something about this. I know. I need <laughs> to know because I don't want to get the big tubs from Safeway or over here. I just want to make it at home sometimes. Oh, no can. No it's can. A, no can. It's a, it is a secret, like, highly guarded recipe mm -hmm. um, that only our, our restaurant managers, the spice mix comes pre-mixed pre for yeah. them, and our restaurant managers are the only ones who are allowed to make the sauce. Shucks. Yeah, Shucks. I know, right? Well, Ali, thank you so much for coming on the <laughs> show for having and us. having us here today. We had so Absolutely. much fun. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cole. Ali Urbic. Senior Marketing Manager at the Panda Restaurant Group. And as Ali takes off the headset, we have our guys from Iolani School, CJ Villanueva and Keon Prusser, just coming off hot from practice that ended at 5.55 p.m. And it looks like they showered, so thank you guys. That's a blessing to me, and that's a blessing to Callan. Boys, as they get their headsets on, 
you guys comfortable? We are in a little booth here at Raising Canes on University. So it is a bit of a, a tight squeeze. We have some big boys over here. Can you hear us fine? Yep, yep. Well, boys, thank you, thank you for coming fresh from practice. I'm interested in knowing, since it is a Wednesday practice, what does a typical Wednesday practice look like in preparation for your next game this Friday? CJ, I'll start with you. So um, Wednesdays is normally our last hard day, meaning last day for full pads, mm -hmm. because normally if our game is on Friday, then Thursday would be our walkthrough day. If it's on Saturday, Thursday would be our last hard day. So today was pretty, uh, pretty good preparation for our next game on coming up on Friday. And I'm um, just, yep, we'll see. We'll mm -hmm. see what happens. And I think everyone thinks about the difficulty of those full practices. Like you said, this is your last tough one before that game Friday. What does tomorrow look like mentally in terms of scout and preparing for that Friday game? Yeah, so Thursday is really our mental day. So we'll go in uh, 340, we'll start stretching, do some specials, and then we'll check through all our personnel. And it's not really as much of a physical day. We do that on Wednesday. And then Thursday will come in, and it's a mental day, and it's our day to lock in for the game. Keon, two and three record on the season, but that record doesn't necessarily indicate how good the team is or how good you guys can be. Looking at your next five games, what is the vibe around the team, and what can you guys do to improve on that two and three record heading into the final five games of the regular season? Yeah, so our team is like really talented. We right. got a lot of skill. It's the hard part for us right now is coming together. Right. So we're working on, you know, coming together as a team, getting all 11 guys on the same page. And I think once we get that going, we can really click and start pushing forward and getting the momentum going. And thinking about it, so I was a former college athlete here at UH. I know you both haven't hit that level yet, but just so you know, high school sports is so special and it's something you'll look back on for the rest of your life. So I'm just curious for both of you, what was one of those moments that you'll forever remember about your time as a Raider on your football team specifically over the last couple of years? I'd say, I mean, well, I, I hope that there's more, more to um, remember by, but as of right now, if I were I had to think, um... I'd say, you know, even, even though it was a loss against Damien uh, last year, I'd say that it really, um, it really changed us and uh, the mentality for this team this year, it really um, made us realize like how close we were and, as lo and if, if we do more than that, then we'll be able to get over that hump. And I'd say that that was pretty much um, a very memorable mo moment for me, me uh, mentally as well, uh, knowing that I had to challenge myself even more to um, be a leader for this team and to um, lead them for the next couple years. And, and CJ, I want to chime in. You mentioned the Iolani Damien game last season for the ILH crown. Mm -hmm. ESPN and Honolulu called that game, and actually my photographer here in the background, Jaren Kobashigawa, had photo, and I'm sorry I'm bringing this up, had photo and video evidence. I think it was a third down pass play in the back of the end zone. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and that is, that is one of your memorable um, moments from last year heading into this year, right? Did yes. you guys feel like you got cheated out of that game? Was you know, that a touchdown? You know, I mean, I think it was a touchdown, but, you know, I feel like we shouldn't. Um, it shouldn't have gone down to that very last play. Oh, good you answer. You know, it was everything that led up to that play, all the, you know, the, the minor mistakes, major mistakes that we made that game, you know. So I... You know, I mean, the outcome of the game is the outcome of the game. We can't control that, but we just have to live with it, um, understand that, you know, we, we can't control everything. We can't control what the refs uh, uh, determine at the end of the game. So we just have to learn from that. That's a good quarterback answer. You're trained right. Thank you. And how does that, you know, that feeling, even though you don't want it to come down to that moment, how does that lasting feeling kind of impact you all going into this season? Is that something that's on fresh on your minds, wanting to feel again, not feel again, I guess, in this case, and overcome? Yeah, so that kind of just plays into like our drive for this year. We have a lot of guys returning from last year who experienced that, and it's not something we want to experience again. So right. we want to prepare ourselves as much as we can to be in a position where we don't have to. It doesn't have to come down to the last play, and we can just kind of drive through and you know just keep going. Mm -hmm. Cole Malsoff, Callan Spiller here at Raising Canes on the student section with Keon Pruser and CJ Villanueva. 
CJ, Keon has been one of your favorite targets to begin the season and even going back to last, se last year. Talk to me about the connection you guys have on the field and how do you compare it to your connection off the field? Uh, you know, uh, Keon was my receiver uh, since uh, my eighth grade year, his freshman year in intermediate. And, you know, it just really, it, um, it really progressed over the years. I really got to know him well. And um, I, I'm actually in his AP stats class this year. So we're actually oh, getting wow. more. Um, uh, not even, uh, not just on the field, but off the field as well, getting work in together. And uh, just building that, that, that bond so that what we do on the field is uh, a lot more special. Yeah. And CJ, you were part of a three-man rotation at quarterback your freshman year. Yes. Fast forward to where you're at now, being a junior starter. What are some of the biggest improvements you've seen in your game from your freshman year all the way to your junior year where you're at now? I'd say just being able to um, cal uh, calm myself down. You know, freshman year was really big for me. Um, just being able to learn from the guys um, ahead of me. And I think just being able, yeah, just being able to relax, calm myself down, mm -hmm. know that I could, I could only control what I could control in the game. And, you know, that's just my job as a quarterback. And especially being a leader too, using my mouth more, being able to talk to the guys up front, especially of the guys up front, and just being able to um, be a leader of men on this team. So I think that's... Um, one of the traits that I feel like I've gotten better at. And Keon, what are some of those things that you worked on in the off season that you'd like to see getting better this season so far? Well, as a team, we come out here like early after after school ends. We're first week out. We're coming out on the football field and training hard. And I think there's a lot of guys that we have. That we put in a lot of work, and we put in a lot of work skills. Um, a lot of people may know or may not know this about our team is that we're the best, most well-conditioned team on the island. So we're running a lot and during practice in the off season, and just I just want to see those all that hard work kind of have that turnover that we we're looking for, so that we can just reap the rewards, basically. And, and Keon, you mentioned conditioning. I think it helps that you do also compete in track and field in the off season, and my. Might that be your, your main sport? My question to you is, what events do you compete in and, and what are your splits for those events? All right, so I compete in the, the 800 is my main event. Okay. And so I hit a 152.6, I think at the States, the States last year. And then in the 400, I hit a 51.1. Which is, it's like my second event. I'm just going to assume that's really, really good. Yeah. Uh, CJ? That's fast. Good? That's good. Fast. And then I let, one of my favorite, I think the best event in track and field is the 4x4. Four four. Okay. It's the relay at the end. Yep. It's the one everybody waits for. That one I can, you know, I can hit a 48 in one lap. So. Wow. Yeah. And, and does that track and field speed translate to the football field I'm, I'm not sure it does yeah yeah so it helps especially when you get that breakout you get that straight line speed you can you can go it, it's not going to help as much with the shiftiness but it'll help once you get that that open field so there's been some conversation with Tyree Kill and with Noah Lyles have you guys heard those conversations where Tyree yeah. Kill has actually called out Noah Lyles the 100 meter Olympic champion to a race in your opinion, Keon and CJ, who wins that race? Does the fastest man on the football field win that race? Or does the fastest man in Olympic track win that race? Keon? I'm taking Noah Lyles in that You're one. You're taking Noah Lyles? Yeah. CJ. Yeah, I'm going to have to go Noah Lyles on that one. Now, do you, I'm sorry, this is totally off topic. Do you guys, are you guys fans of Noah Lyles, his antics? Are you guys fans of that game? Do you guys implement the Noah Lyles in your football game, CJ? Um... For me, I mean, I'm not really, I mean, I do track, but it's not, like, I, I, I normally only watch him for, like, motivation before right, my right, track right. meets and stuff. But in my game, I don't really, like, not really. No, I won't say not really. Keon? Yeah, his style is, I, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's, it's over the top. Style. It's yeah, over the top for exactly. sure, for sure. But he yeah. does back it up. He does back it up. Callum? And especially with your season continuing throughout, what are some of those goals you guys have as a team, whether it's for this Friday for the end of the season, looking ahead, what are you hoping to see? Um, for us as a group, um, I'm really looking forward to us um, just, just just becoming more closer together. You know, uh, I'd say the main factor last year as 
last season, the reason why we weren't able to get over that hump was because we weren't, we weren't one unit, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, I see the difference every day. We, you know, we always, we are, like, we're always talking story in the locker room. Like, it's not um, junior, seniors, one side, sophomores, the other side, underclassmen, the other side. It's just one, and I, and I really enjoy seeing that. And, you know, I'm just glad, and I'm really looking forward to the team just improving as a whole, step by step, day by day, every day get better 1%. So uh, that's exactly what I'm excited for. And we are approaching another quick timeout. But when we come back, you'll hear more from CJ Villanueva and Keon Prusser as they will join us in a special segment called This or That. We'll explain that more after this break. This is the student section on ESPN Honolulu. You are listening to the student section on ESPN Honolulu. Okay, welcome back to the student section. Cole Malsoff, Callan Spiller here live at Raising Canes on South King Street. We are joined by Iolani football players, CJ Villanueva, Keon Prusser. And this point in the show, we're going to introduce another segment. So with Jovi and Lily, we introduce a segment called Sister Superlatives. On th- now in this segment, we're going to do this or that. It's similar to would you rather. So we'll give you two options, and you'll simply choose this or that. For example, apples or oranges. Our first this or that. Tom Brady or Patrick Mahomes. CJ, you're the quarterback. You go first. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to go with Tom Brady. Okay. You know, uh, Patrick Mahomes, you know, I mean, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Niners fan, so I really like that guy. But, you know, he's good, but I think Tom Brady. You're getting booed by the Elani faithful over there. <laughs> Keon? I'm taking Tom Brady, too. Tom Brady? Yeah, I just don't like the way Mahomes carries himself. Really? Yeah, like off the field or just his style. I don't know. Oh, so you guys are old school guys. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, next one. Raising Canes or Chick-fil-A? Now, we are at Raising Canes now. <laughs> CJ. Raising Canes. Raising Canes. Keon? Raising Canes. Okay, that was a okay. quick one. Good. We got that out of the way. Ali was still here. I, I was... I was sweating a little bit. Okay. Night games or day games? Definitely night games. CJ, night games, why? I don't know, just that vibe, that energy, that like that that moment when you're in, mm-hmm. when you're in um when you're going to get the snap and you just you like you hear the crowd, you hear the the adrenaline is just rushing. It's more of a spotlight right yeah. on you. Keon? Yeah, I'm taking night games. Just mm-hmm. like you said the spot like it, like it's literally under the lights. Like, yeah. that's what everybody talks about. That's what you look forward to is under the lights. Mm-hmm. Right. I was just going to say Friday night lights is a thing for a yep. reason I never played. But also in terms of preparation, when I played on the court, those night games are easier. You have the whole day to prepare. You're ready to go. Sometimes yeah. those morning games you get thrown off yeah. when you don't have that full warm up or that full time to sleep in. So, kind of related, slightly off, but to the food comment, would you pick chocolate candy? Or would you pick sour candy? I love chocolate candy. Chocolate candy. Favorite chocolate candy? Um, I'd say anything from Seas Candies. Ooh, that's my mom's favorite chocolate. Good pick. Keon? I like the sour candy more. Than sour candy. Yeah. Okay, I want to ask you the same question. Favorite sour candy? All right, it's not really sour, but just like regular candy, like okay. sweet tart ropes. Ooh, yeah. good pick. Good pick so as still, well. Still a little bit of that sweet sour category yeah. versus the chocolate still. And so now when it comes to superheroes, we have a lot of great movies coming out, both sides. Marvel fan or DC fan? I'm more of a Marvel guy, I'd say, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like the Marvel more. I don't even, I don't know, really know DC that well. Me neither. I just kind of put that on because people talk about <laughs> Marvel and DC. So I just put it I on. I mean, DC's Batman. Okay, DC's okay, Batman. okay, okay. But, you know, Marvel. Superman? Yeah, Superman. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So they've had some strong ones. The movie's not quite as recent. But still classic, so you got to ask it. I'm, I'm older than everyone here, so maybe I just remember that. I'm, but. More, I'm more of a Captain America, Iron Man kind of guy. Uh, CJ Villanueva, Keon Proust are joining us on the student section live at Raising Canes here tonight. This one is a personal one for me. And I hope, I really, really hope you guys answered this correctly because one of these players I hold near and dear to my heart. LeBron James or Steph Curry? CJ? LeBron James. Yes. Keon, don't let that influence your answer. Steph Curry. <laughs> Steph Curry. You're just saying that because I like LeBron or actually Steph Curry? No, I just like the three ball. <laughs> really? And are you saying LeBron honestly and truthfully? Yeah, I was. Uh, um, I watched him in Miami. Like, yeah. 
when we won, when we won that final mm-hmm. and um, him in Cleveland. Got it. Yeah. See, here's the thing, though. As a former basketball player, this harkens back to talking to Lily and Jovi. LeBron got more of that post skill set. He can see he can still shoot. But to me, that question is comparing apples and oranges. They're both great in their own ways. As a former post, I love LeBron. Steph's range is incredible. How are you supposed to really pick between those two and what they do and what they bring to their teams? They're both invaluable. You know what, Callan? I respect that. I respect that answer, especially because Steph Curry kind of saved LeBron's legacy in that Olympic. I mean, if <laughs> LeBron lost an Olympic game, oh my God, the haters would be out in flock. So thank you to Steph Curry for making like five threes in a row in that Olympic yeah, game. Yeah. Okay, moving on. This one is more for Keon. 400 meter race or 800 meter race? So, like, I'm better at the eight. Okay. But I think the four is, like, more fun. The four is more fun. And, yeah. and would you pick the four by four as oh, your four by, event? Yeah, four by four. That's is, your event. Yeah. So, we'll be looking for Iolani to win the four by four this coming spring. Yes. Okay. okay. Look at that. CJ's nodding his head. He's like, we got the confidence we in Keon. Win, we win this year. They're going to crush <laughs> it. CJ, are you, are you, do you participate in the four by four relay as well? Um, I do track, but I'm not, I'm not on that level like Keon, though. <laughs> See, that was me too in high school. I, would, I never actually competed on the track team, but I'd go out with the throwers and just practice throwing the javelin and practice some form. Never did. Not per se a runner. Lily and Joby would tell you that too. But one more, kind of in the music scene, would you pick Drake or Kendr- Kendrick Lamar? Oh, uh, I'll have to go Kendrick. Kendrick Lamar, okay. Keon? Yeah, I'm going Kendrick. On Kendrick that Lamar fans over here, I respect it. I respect it. He, I think he won that, that sort of battle, right, between the two. Okay, we have a couple minutes left on the show. Like Lily and Jovi, we want to do some fan questions, some guest questions from um, ESPN Honolulu and our followers. CJ, this one is for you, and I cannot pr- pronounce that username. Who is your favorite quarterback of all time? Quarterback of all time, I say Joe Montana. Wow, you are an old school guy. The deep yeah. cut there. Yeah. Joe Montana. How about now playing in the NFL? Oh, uh, I'd have to go Josh Allen. Josh Allen? I love his game. I love his game. Allen? And now for Keon. Gotta ask you, from PSAV28, how are you looking to bounce back this week in your game? Um, well, we really used the, what we took from the Puno game, all of the lessons we can learn from that, and we applied it this week during practice. And so we worked super hard during practice, and now we're taking all that, using that energy, um, all the things that we learned from and just applying it this Friday, hopefully. CJ, for you, same question. How, look, how are you guys looking to bounce back from your loss to Puno? You know, that loss was a um, much-needed loss, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I'd say it really brought the physicality in us. Um, and like, I've seen it in practice this week. We're a lot more physical. And like, just the energy was a lot more surreal in, in, uh, during practice. So I'm just glad that, you know, obviously you wanted to win, of course, but I'm glad, I'm glad that we lost because we, we learned a lot from that. And I think that's something, as an athlete, that's true. And I think about my days with these two. Their first season, we were 0-4, our first four games of the season. Basketball is a very long season, too, but we were able to bounce back, win that championship. And I think without those losses, you don't learn the lessons. You don't have that growth that comes back. So really excited to watch you guys and the Raiders take the field here this week and for the rest of the season. And last question before we have to end the show. Keon, this is for you. Just Bryce asks, how do you get good at wide receiver? Is there, is there something in the water? What, how do you get good at wide receiver? I mean, I only started playing my freshman year, and I think it's really just taking reps. Like, you just got to put in the work and, you know, taking reps outside of, outside of practice, doing what you can, like, off the field, um, whether it be, like, throwing with your guys, just getting all the work in that you can. And we are coming on are out for the show. I just want to quickly say thank you to CJ. Thank you to Keon for joining us today right after practice. And thank you to Callan for co-hosting with me today. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for having me. Cole Malsoff, Callan Spiller. You're listening to the student section on ESPN Honolulu.